What's up weirdos? I'm Felicia and I like scary movies and today I'm giving you my favorite horror sequels. Let's start out strong, shall we? Paranormal Activity 3. Guys, I mean a prequel? I can't believe a prequel is this good. This one's from 2011 and was directed by Henry Joost and Ariel Schulman. It gives us the backstory of Katie that we wanted to know so badly. In 1988, young sisters Katie and Christy befriend an invisible entity who resides in their home. So all the stuff we hear in the first two movies about this entity attaching itself to Katie and her family, we get to see it all. And it's so good. The scares in this one are excellent. The fact that it's the two most adorable little girls I've ever seen in my life, like that's a bonus. The babysitter sequence, like there's just so much ghost stuff, demon stuff, whatever in this movie that is just so well done. Next up we have Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. I watched this one in 2020 for the first time and was truly amazed. I'd always heard it was like the worst thing ever made. I thought it was so much fun. You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. First of all, let's just take a good old look at the soundtrack. Oh, I should say this came out in the year 2000, which is about to become very apparent. P.O.D. Rob Zombie System of a Down. Nickelback. Come on! Come on! Queens of the Stone Age. It's just... It's just amazing. It was co-written, directed, and I think edited by Joe Berlinger. We have this girl being a goth queen. Like, what is this girl's name? Kim Director. Kim Director, your work in this movie is unmatched. This is how me as like a middle schooler pictured myself when I was like a high schooler or like an adult. I'm not that far off. Is it a perfect film? No! <laughs> but it's fun. All right, next up, and I'm not gonna talk about this one too much because we just covered it on Horror Movie Club, but Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky is, is my personal perfect Chucky film. It's from 1998, it introduces Tiffany, played by Jennifer Tilly, who is just a star. Oh, and I'm gonna mention this that I said in Horror Movie Club, but Tiffany has an Instagram account. I think it's Tiffany the Movie Star. I'm gonna pop it right here. Check it out, it's worth your time. Next up. Prom Night 2, Hello Mary Lou. First of all, this movie really has nothing to do with the first prom night with Jamie Lee Curtis. I think they just ended up naming this prom night 2 for marketing purposes. But I would say this is the superior film. I personally find the first prom night very boring. I don't think it's that scary or exciting or fun. And I can just never believe Jamie Lee Curtis as a teenager. She has looked like an adult her whole life. She has never been a child. She has never looked like a teenager. I'm exaggerating. But you know what I mean? That's a, that's a woman's face. But Hello Mary Lou, okay. Uh, written by Ron Oliver and directed by Bruce Pittman. 30 years after her accidental death at her 1957 senior prom, the tortured spirit of prom queen Mary Lou Maloney returns to seek revenge. So first of all, this movie's great because you, you're looking at two time periods. You got the 50s, you got the 80s. And I'll just start with this. You're never gonna know what's coming in this film. There are moments of the wildest CGI I've ever seen. Uh, also great practical effects. And just downright weird stuff. There's a talking rocking horse. There's a weird incest moment. There, there's just a lot going on in this movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend. <laughs> Next up, we have Ouija Origin of Evil. This one's just good because Mike Flanagan did it. I mean, it's, he just did a good job. This is actually another prequel, by the way, to the 2014 film Ouija, but they seem to be not really connected. In 1967 Los Angeles, a widowed mother and her daughters add a new stunt to bolster their seance scam business. They invite an evil presence into their home, not realizing how dangerous it is. This is so great because it literally starts off with a mom and her daughters scamming people by pretending to be psychic and then accidentally bringing something demonic into their house. It's just, it's very smart and very enjoyable. This one also has a particularly good cast. We have Annalise Basso, uh, who plays one of the daughters, Lulu Wilson, who plays kind of the main daughter. She's really good. Elizabeth Reeser, who I just love in everything. She's so, she's like an angel. 
good plot, good acting, good scares, super fun paranormal film. Just fun. Okay, next up we have Final Destination 3. To be fair, I don't think I've actually seen all the Final Destination films, but this is my favorite of the ones I have seen. Six years after students cheated death, another teen has a premonition she and her friends will be involved in an accident on a roller coaster. <laughs> When the vision proves true, the student and survivors deal with the repercussions of cheating the Grim Reaper. Wait, I just got so confused. So this is directed by James Wong, who is a different person than James Wan. I literally just had a moment where I was like, James Wan directed Final Destination 3? Is that why I love it so much? No, it's James Wong, who's also a producer on like the X-Files, American Horror Story. Oh, he loves the spooky. But anyways, I freaking love the roller coaster amusement park aspect to this film. It also has one of my favorite Final Destination deaths, which is of course the tanning bed scene. This one is just a blast. Okay, and the last one I'm gonna mention, and I'm gonna sort of casually mention this because I haven't seen it in a long time. It came out in 2015, and that is Insidious Chapter 3. This is a movie Lauren and I saw, I think, in theaters and just loved it. I also just found out that it was the directorial debut of Lee Wannell, so that's nice. This is, dare I say, another prequel? <laughs> this is just all prequels! Okay, but I do really like this one. I actually really added this to the list to remind myself to rewatch it, but I, I just remember it being really fun, having such silly jump scares. And there's a moment where um, this girl becomes possessed and like snaps off the casts that are on her legs in a way that is so epic. I just, that's like the moment that really stuck with me. So I added that so I could rewatch it. And that's it. I'm gonna go watch Insidious 3. So uh, have a nice screen. Bye.